you are welcome to HN What's Your Say? The number one listening show where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring our Kelly. Real name, Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. We must admit the government has made way too many blunders when handling the case against R. Kelly. Blunders that have exposed their core reason for indicting him in the first place, and the most part of it being highly prejudicial. The government's willingness to team up with whoever wished to exploit the R&B king, in order to serve their rather selfish goal of taking him down has made the whole world raise eyebrows and wonder whether the United States is still the great nation it purports to be. While the government prosecutors in conjunction with the biggest record company in the world Sony, and the Brooklyn court managed to get away with 10 guilty counts from the New York trial, the Chicago jury could not be compromised, and certainly did their job seeing R. Kelly win on the most counts against him. The Chicago jury did their job well, until Judge Lyon and Weber interfered in their judgment when he insisted that if R. Kelly is guilty for enticement, then he is automatically guilty for coercing too. This was rather absurd considering this is not the way the law is supposed to be interpreted. Another mistake the prosecution made was to associate themselves with untruthful persons, and present them as witnesses on the case. Once the defense succeeded in bursting their falsehoods, it left the prosecution exposed to criticism, and a potential vote of no confidence in the way they conduct their business. The blame for this technically trickles back to the DA, and could place her into a bad spot for potential scrutiny. While they may have gotten away with this kind of illegal practice in New York, they now realize they are playing with fire and need to step on the brake pedal for a moment. In our previous videos where we discussed the Chicago state charges against R. Kelly, we highlighted some new defense witnesses that are willing to provide counter-testimonies as key defense witnesses on R. Kelly's camp. An example being the real hair braider who appeared in R. Kelly's video, and has for long been impersonated by the phony one whose interest is to extort the R&B king. The question on the table was going to be, why are you so sure the song was about you yet I was the one on the video? And why would you say R. Kelly did this and that to you, yet you were 24 years old, and there were no signs of forceful entry? With this new defense witness on board, Lanita Carter has no real case and Kim Fox knows this very well. Another new defense witness that was ready to blow the case wide open is the friend to Geronda Pace we mentioned in one of the previous episodes, who was willing to testify in the New York trial but was never called upon. According to her, Geronda Pace who had a boyfriend in the R. Kelly mansion has been lying all along and is no victim. If she took the stand to testify, that would be another prosecution witness down. And the prosecution would be almost without a witness. The fear for a backfire of this sort is what makes Kim Fox nervous and desperate to quit the entire R. Kelly case. She probably realizes it has dragged long enough and feels the need to end it. I am sure she is not only bothered with the Chicago state charges, but also what's likely to transpire at the New York appeal yet to come. She knows that with all the errors prosecution has made, her reputation as a district attorney is at risk. She therefore needs to cut the rope loose before things go south and she becomes the next point of criticism. Another possible reason Kim Fox is bothered by the case, is the fact that information leaked about one of the key people in her office who misbehaved when she initiated informal communications with the prosecution lead witness in her text messages. According to reports, the messages exchanged by prosecutor Angel Kroll with the witness are completely against the working ethics actors in the DA's office are supposed to follow. While they imagined that retiring Angel Kroll from the office, and deploying her for another government duty would suffice in covering up, the noise has been too much and the dust hasn't settled. Reports of prosecutor misconduct are definitely directly pointed at the district attorney's office, where Kim Fox is the assistant top official. She therefore would rather let these remaining R. Kelly accusers go to hell than make more ineffective accusations on the stand, all at the expense of her precious name as the assistant district attorney. There is this common piece of advice that suggests you shouldn't hunt what you can't kill. I think Kim Fox is adhering to this considering all signs show that her continued pursuit of cases against R. Kelly will likely end in tears after losing miserably. Because she always calculates her move, she cannot be going for a predetermined defeat without thinking twice about it. 
It's therefore a huge possibility that she will be laying down her tools sooner than later, and an official announcement in this regard will be made soon. According to Crazy Boother, Time and again I have noted that R. Kelly is behind bars for nothing. Meanwhile, these so-called accusers need to be locked up for defamation. It should not be acceptable that people place charges and later withdraw with no serious repercussions. R. Kelly needs both monetary compensation for the wasted time and legal fees with regard to the state charges being withdrawn. It is so funny to see that with all these legal mistakes and gaffes by the prosecutors, it's still R. Kelly alone on the receiving end of penalties. Why has an angel Kroll been brought to book yet? Why has the investigation report for the Bureau of Prisons official who was illegally listening in on R. Kelly's conversations with his lawyer not been presented to attorney Jennifer Bonjean like she requested? It's time the government played fair and followed the law, not to dictate over people and predetermined verdicts like they did on this case. According to D. I hope the New York case also gets thrown out and R. Kelly gets acquitted as soon as possible. I am sure if R. Kelly gets out, he will quickly return to making great music and get all the accolades without evil Sony getting a penny of it. I have been saying he is innocent ever since these charges came up. If prosecution now believes they won't succeed with the state charges against him, they probably know that everything they have been plotting against him has all along been a fraud and that it won't be long before it's all detected and exposed. If you wish to take part in a live interview on this channel discussing any of these topics, let us know by emailing us on sashahnnewsroom at gmail.com for scheduling. That is all we had for you today on HN What's Your Say? To keep updated whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now. Also remember to hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment section below, and let us know if you would like us to publish your views in our next release. We value all our subscribers' opinions.